Hello Internet, welcome back to our tutorial series. In this episode, I think we're going to do some testing and see what it takes to get through walls um, because we want to get through the lab walls. Now, these walls are not the same as the concrete walls of the lab. Uh, so if we could find a building with concrete walls for testing would be great. The only one I can think of that would be nearby is the prison, which I really don't want to ram the prison. We can test it though. So go ahead and give me, what are these walls? Just, they're not, they're not concrete. Um, give me the general, what is it? Repair kit. Uh, give me this one. Let's go see if we can cut down a tree into the prison. Now this is a real dumb thing to do. Oh no, they have a huge, yeah, border. So we're not going to be able to collapse a tree on the uh, on the prison. That's not going to work. Okay, let's try on a house and see what kind of impact it has. If we can find a house with a tree next to it. They also kind of have a buffer around them. So this is not, not really going to work here. We can do this one. Cut down it. No, don't pick it. I don't want the... I don't want it. So activate... Repair kit, chop down a tree, this tree, ignore, because that's going to just constantly be going. You'll see there are holes in the ground here leading to the basement. Uh, we had at one point lured some enemies into that basement, so we really don't want to go down there. So let's see what this does. It did break the wall, but this is not like a proper concrete wall so that's possible I also wanted to try ramming a building with a vehicle so let's get the little dinky car which is garbage you have an engine gas what what was I looking for oh seat belts yes so anytime you're in an accident you want a seat belt or a harness because it will prevent you from taking tons of damage so let's pop in this it has a seat belt and let's just ram it into this building. I don't want to go super fast. I want to hit it very slowly and see what happens. Nothing. Okay. Let's back it up. Let's hit it a little harder. I'm afraid to go too fast and hurt myself. It did break the brick. You hear smash. We're not able to back up. Rams into the brick wall with a smash. No, back up. Okay, uh, and then let's just try hitting it again at around that same speed. Oh, we're going to hit our Humvee because I'm dumb. Oh, we did not hit the Humvee. It did not further break the wall. Hmm. I don't know. I didn't want to take the Humvee up there and risk destroying the Humvee by breaking the wall. We can try with the little car, but I don't really expect that that'll do much. You can dive out of a moving vehicle. Let's, um, <laughs> for science, let's destroy this car. Let's, uh, back all the way up. Uh, we're losing stamina because of the smoke. Probably going to take some damage diving out of a moving car. Let's crank the speed. Okay. And see what we do here. Uh, so do we dive? Stop driving? Oh God, if we die, I'm just going to uh, revert here because I'm not going to. It didn't really do anything and we didn't die, which is so weird because uh, we were standing in a door frame when we hit a, a building going very quickly. It did destroy some of the wall. I mean, it seems, well, the engine's dead now, looks like. Back it up. Nope, still drivable. That's weird. Uh, it said it was too heavy for its engine, so I thought we completely broke it. Well, whatever. Um, that's obviously a viable option for these kind of buildings. It doesn't seem to have done much. We have to get through two layers at the lab, so that doesn't seem like a viable option to me. Again, I'm absolutely infuriated that we can't make... You're telling me I can craft a steel spear from scratch, literally from scratch, but I can't make a pickaxe head? and mount it to a stick. I find that absolutely ridiculous. It's one of those things in Cataclysm that's like, 
It just feels like a hurdle for no reason. And I really hate that. We picked up a lot of MREs recently. Why don't we crack an MRE just to show you uh, what MREs are like. We'll grab uh, Asian beef and vegetables. Now it's important to note that your um, food uh, allergy or aversions will affect this. So like we are lactose intolerant. So if we pick up the cheese tortellini, we will not be able to eat it because it will have a dairy product in it. So we'll just grab the uh, Asian beef and vegetables. We'll step away so we have a clear tile to work on. We'll go in our inventory and we will select the MRE and we will go to disassemble. Because if you do this through the butchering menu, you have a chance of clicking the wrong thing, which will cut it up into pieces and you won't get anything out of it. So we'll choose to disassemble it from the item menu. When we disassemble things, it drops the items on the floor. So here we'll have a, a multiple uh, multiple things dropped here. We have the main entree, which is where most of the calories will be, 320 calories. Cracker also has decent calories. Um, and then we have an accessory pack and a dessert pack. The accessory pack, I think, is just silverware. No, it's not. It contains a water purification tablet, gummy vitamins, coffee powder, lemonade drink mix, a matchbook, chewing gum, paper, a spork, and one plastic bag. The dessert pack uh, will have cookies, uh, it has dehydrated fruit, chocolate bar, chocolate candy, cookie, and a plastic bag. So if we, um, there are no corpses to butcher. So we'd have to, uh, yeah. So here, if we go to cut up, it will act, it will destroy the items. We're looking for the top entry. So let's take apart the dessert pack, take apart the accessory pack. And then if we go to our eat menu, you'll see we have 320, 480, you know, like 760, we have about, a, looks like a th like 1,100, 1,200 calories here, more if we could eat the cheese spread. So it's not a ton, ton of calories, but it is um, a, a hefty amount of calories per MRE. So we eat the entree, we eat the cookie and the cracker. We eat the chocolate bar, has a lot of calories as well. I don't really want the other stuff. We'll just drag those onto the unsorted pile for now. Uh, and then we'll drink something. Again, it came with drink mix, but I don't often make any of the drinks out of the drink mix. Drink some cranberry juice because it's going to go bad over the course of the next couple weeks. Um, what can we do right now to increase our likelihood of getting in the lab? Literally, literally nothing. Uh, none of these books do anything for us. I mean, we don't have the fab to craft it anyway, but like, we could get it pretty easily. We need the books. So what do we, what do we do here? What, what, let's look at this town. We have houses. Houses can have books in them. So we could just run through all these houses looking for books and ignore everything else to be looted some other time. Um, there's nothing else that would help us. None of these, maybe a cemetery would have a pickaxe, but that would be weird. Public space, I don't think there's, I think there's literally nothing in a public space. Head shop, no. Landfill, no. Same thing, maybe pickaxe in a landfill? Seems real unlikely though. Uh, we would be looking for hardware stores, which we already found one, but it didn't have really anything at all in it. It's this one. It was basically empty. Right? Is that the only one? Or was there another one? Oh, there's two. Oh. Did we go to that one? We didn't mark it. I really want to go to that hardware store. Okay, well that's what we're doing now. So we'll head up there. Really wish that little red dot would stop blinking next to my character when I move. I don't know what that's about. Probably a bug with targeting or something. I don't know. Um... We should have checked our equipment before we left. We don't need to carry all this stuff with us. And uh, you know what? We should probably take the shopping cart, actually. So let's drop. Don't need the welder, the missed repair kit. We don't need the goggles. Always canceling headgear. Keep the hacksaw on us. We keep the rubber hose and all that, I guess. Give me the shopping cart. Shopping carts can't be walked through windows, by the way. So that's why I've been taking the door when I use the shopping cart. Uh, let's use auto move again to just quickly cover some ground here. Ignore. 
cannot reach that destination. Well, that's weird because pretty sure there's nothing up there. Uh, we got a fat zombie trailing us. We'll go ahead and take care of that. We don't really want something sweeping up behind us while we're trying to maneuver. Shift to running. Fatty. Come on, fatty. I'm kind of a fatty. 45 we'll take. Stop running. Grab the shopping cart. We're going to head the route we took before, kind of. Uh, so I think we're going to head over this way and then head up. And instead of going to the baseball diamond, we're just going to go over and hopefully get up here. It's pretty far away, though. There's a lot of empty space up there as well. So hopefully we can just navigate safely. But just got to be careful once we get over here to where we haven't really cleared things out. Some zombies to our south are not a concern. We've already cleared this area. This is where the baseball diamond is to our north. Seeing regular zombie, not really a concern. Again, when we were looking for diesel, I was going to clear out the whole diamond, but the just number of zombies that are up there make me not want to do that. Actually, can we slip by there without being seen? How many of you... Looks like a lot of them have migrated. I think this is near the gun shop we alerted. Yeah, so they probably migrated up to the gun shop. The concern is that if we head north, we're going to see where they're all clustered and they'll be revealed uh, and they'll see us. So let's head through the alley here and see what we can can do about circumventing this giant horde. Another shady zombie. Again, at daytime, the shady zombies are basically blind. So that's not really a concern. Really want to be careful moving up to a road we've never seen before. Looks very clear. Okay. Seeing some stuff. Let's let them come to us and try to clear them out a little bit. Just hang out until they come. They did, unfortunately, have a pincer movement, which is not great to be surrounded like that, but we're fine. Smash them. Hit them, hit them, hit them. Okay. Kill the crawling zombie. Such a pitiful life he must have. Put him out of his misery. That poor guy. He was probably like a doctor before the apocalypse. Seeing a lot more stuff. Where am I seeing? Kind of all over the place. This guy to our north has spotted us. See if he comes through the fence. Does not seem to be coming through the fence. Okay. Uh, we would like to head north here. But if we had to divert and actually go east, we could do that. What is this G here? Community garden. Anything over here? No, we've already seen these buildings. So we haven't revealed anything new in this area. The cemetery might have something. It seems really unlikely. They would obviously have shovels, but... Pickaxe, jackhammer maybe. Be real careful as we approach unseen areas. We're doing okay. Our character is geared pretty okay for this stage of the game. But we're not like uh, super resilient. Our armor could be better. Our weapon is fine. Our weapon is, is good even. Why would you do that, child? I'm right here. Okay, that smashed glass. Got one coming behind us. I wish you would hit this effing kid. I wish they weren't so damn hard to hit. Um, the, the breaking glass and things will draw additional enemies to us. So we kind of want to uh, keep an eye on that and wait a little bit before we proceed. That way we can see if anything else has been drawn to us. Okay, that one was revived, so it must have died on plants or something. So let's just hang out for a few turns. Not seeing anything. Sorry, my throat today. God, I'm only on episode three. My throat is really bothering me. I really need to stop smoking. Okay, we do hear something around the corner there. You hear brush probably moving in the bushes. Okay, quite a lot down there actually. Some of which has spotted us. Let's fall back and clear these out. Uh, we do have the added benefit of these bushes here which will deal a lot of damage to the zombies if they walk through them. So let's stand near the bush so he gets... Well, I was going to say hopefully he steps onto it, but no, he didn't, and now he's grabbed us. Why are you so much faster than the other ones? You shouldn't be able to grab me. No one gets to grab me. It's 2020. You don't grab people unless you're the President of the United States and you get secretly recorded in a bus. Anyway... Yeah, we're just going to clear through here. Looks like some of them broke uh, through the fence to our north. 
Come on, man. I don't know why they diver divert to smash the windows, but every little bit of noise is uh, increases the chance something else will come after us. Just smashing up the windows over there. Come on. I don't know why that guy was so slow. Ignore. Firefighters coming. Firefighters, uh, we talked about a little bit. Their main draw is that they will drop firefighter gear. They are pretty armored. So it's one of those things where you kind of need to... Please stop smashing everything and just come here and fight me. Step into the rose bush. Uh, they are pretty armored, so it can be a little tricky to penetrate that armor. He did die. We hit him for quite a lot. He had a grappling hook on him. I don't know what they do or how they work, so I'm not going to play with that. Uh, we don't want to take any of his gear. Hopefully at this point we've cleared out most of what was right here. We did hear some other glass. Yeah, hello, zombie. Just keep clearing them out. This is a decent place for us to fight because it's a narrow area. We can retreat. We know that the area behind us is relatively safe. So if we need to retreat, we know where to retreat to. It's very important whenever you engage in lengthy combat bits like this. Ooh, hello, shocker. Um... When you engage in lengthy combat like this, it's very important to know where your retreat path is uh, because there are going to be times when you need to fall back. So here we see a shocker zombie. This is a new zombie. It's the first time we've seen a shocker since we started this game. It has spotted us, which is very concerning. Um, shocker zombies. Uh, we've seen the zapper zombies. They evolve into shocker zombies. And then shocker zombies evolve into some pretty scary stuff later in the game. Shocker zombies have a lot going on. Number one, they have a ranged attack, which most zombies do not. So us going up to melee him is a terrible, terrible decision. He, when we get close, will shoot electricity at us, which will fill up an AoE around us and make it difficult for us to navigate through and escape. It will cause us a lot of pain. Electricity in the old versions of the game uh, was one of the ways that new players died all the time. They would shock you from ranged, and deal quite a bit of damage, which now will slow us down and cause us all kinds of problems. So that's the number one thing that the Shocker Zombie does, is that it will throw electricity at you. Not sure what exactly the range is, but it's close-ish. We don't want to get too close. I would say, like, stay at least, like, ten tiles away from it, preferably. Next thing that they have going on is they have a zap-back ability. What this means is that if you attack them with a metal weapon, they, have a, they will electrocute you. This can be circumvented by having a weapon like ours, which is non-conductive. Despite being a steel spear, it is a uh, non-conductive weapon. So we could safely melee him without taking damage. And even if you have a conductive weapon, uh, it was there was a change recently where if you have non-conductive gloves, which these are non-conductive gloves, that will also prevent you from being shocked. So even if you're using a metal weapon, but you're wearing these leather gloves, you will not be electrocuted when you hit the zombie. So that's the second thing they have going on. Third thing they have going on is that they glow in the dark. So if it's nighttime, you will spot shockers from very far away. And the best time to engage the shocker zombie is at night because they have a relatively short vision radius. So we can walk up to him, stand here in the dark. He can't see us, but we can see him and we can shoot him uh, and kill him before he gets over to us pretty easily and not, not really much difficulty at all. Fourth thing they have going for them, they have bionics in their body. So, uh, currently, they have bionics in their body. In the future, it's going to change where they won't have as many bionics, and bionics should be random instead of being on certain creatures. But at the time of this recording, um, pretty much every shocker version of the shocker, other than the zapper zombie, has CBMs in its body, uh, compact bionic modules, which we use for installing bionics. Now, you get those by harvesting its corpse. So... Once we kill this shocker, we will want to dissect him, which uh, will be based on our skills. We'll determine whether or not we get a CBM that we could later install in our own body. So shockers are very valuable in that they can give you bionics. Um, they give civilian bionics. Certain creatures give uh, military bionics. These give civilian bionics. There's also like sci scientist bionics, but that's not super relevant. Um, so this guy is very dangerous. Now, my brain says run away um, and not engage him at all. But it's a tutorial series, and we should probably show you how dangerous they are. Why don't we save 
and then I'll run out and try to melee him, and we're going to die, probably, uh, or we're at least going to take a lot of damage. I'm just doing this to show you the shock attack, and I'm just doing this to show you how dangerous they are. We're going to reload our save. I'm not going to kill our character because uh, this is just demonstration purposes. You would never do this. Do not do not run towards a shocker and melee them. That is a terrible decision. Don't ever do this. So did we save? We did save. So let's go over here. And he has fired electricity at us. This is what the electricity looks like. Uh, if it hits you, you will be standing in the tile and it will be dealing, it will deal damage to you. Additionally, it sticks around for several turns. So if we move up, you'll see it starts to dissipate and shift positions. So even if it doesn't hit you immediately, it can hit you after the fact. So uh, let's go melee him. Uh, you'll see he hit us multiple times. They're relatively quick. We've been uh, zapped for some reason. I'm not sure why we were zapped because we have a non-conductive weapon, but yeah. Uh, we did actually kill him. Maybe I won't reload our save. Uh, we didn't really take any hits there, uh, weirdly. We did because I walked into the, the shock, but like, I'm really surprised. I thought they were a little bit more durable than that. Uh, I still would not recommend that. That's not what you should have done. What I was going to do is reload our save, swap to our pistol, and try to put it down before it could really get to us. Do I want to reload the save and show you that? I guess not. I, Whatever. Uh, it's dead. So let's kill the stragglers here. We are in moderate pain. Being electrocuted, surprisingly, hurts kind of a lot. Uh, this made us slower as well, so we need to be mindful of that. Uh, like that guy just jumped quite, quite far here. So let's step forward. Okay. Uh, and there's a book here. Oh, fairy tales we don't care about. Now, we've killed the Shocker, which, again, kind of surprising. Thought it would be a little bit more durable than that. Let's uh, step out here, see where everything is. South, south, pretty far to the south, and one pretty far to the north. Do not pulp corpses that you want to dissect. So, we killed the Shocker. We want to dissect him for possible CBMs. If we smash his corpse, pulp his corpse, it will give us less likely of a chance of getting CBMs. Also, if you're dismembering instead of um, smashing, do not dismember them because then you cannot butch dissect them. So don't do that. I think that's true. Uh, don't do that. We're in a fair bit of pain. Go ahead and eat some aspirin, although it will only be a, a mild uh, change. You'll see our stats have taken a very significant reduction as a result of being in such a high amount of pain. That's going to be problematic. Now, um, yeah, sorry, just thinking. Um, we want to dissect this. Now, in order to dissect, you need a couple things. You need a, uh, well, one thing in particular. You need a tool with a fine cutting uh, quality. The better the tool, the more likely you are to get a, a positive harvest. So the pocket knife is not ideal. We want a scalpel. It's like one of the best. The scalpel bionic is the best... Um, surgical tool in the game, I believe, but a scalpel, exacto knife uh, will also do, and then a pocket knife is kind of in an emergency, so we should have picked up an exacto knife at base, but I didn't think we'd be seeing shockers yet, so I didn't really think about it. Uh, so we'll go to butcher, we'll go to shocker zombie, and then we want to select the dissect option. Now you'll see this takes a very long time, but it gives some flavor text about harvesting bionics, not flavor text, indications of how this works. Um, we're going to want to dissect this. The problem is it's daylight. You can't butcher in the dark, but at daylight, when you haven't cleared out the enemies, every time you see an enemy, you're going to get a message. And if you get interrupted, like let's say a monster comes over and attacks us, we're going to stop dissecting and we're going to lose all that progress. So what I recommend is hauling the body and we're going to move this, ignore, we're going to move this to a safe-ish location for us to dissect without having any interruptions so we're going to grab him and we're going to pull him back here there's a shed over here let's go to the shed seems pretty isolated of course it's locked um you know what this is an isolated place this is fine can we see the road from here no so this is a fine place to do it so we'll go ahead and dissect him dissect 
You could use a better tool, but this will do. Yeah, again, not the best tool in the world, but it's what we have. And we failed to recover any bionics. Uh, we got two burnt out bionics, which are useless. Um, depending on the mod you're playing, uh, certain mods will take advantage of these burnout bionics. But in Vanilla Cataclysm, it doesn't do anything, so we didn't get anything of value out of it. This is based on our first aid skill, uh, is the main one used for dissecting, as well as the quality of the tool that we're using. Someone told me that survival also has an impact on this. I don't know if that's true, um, but I know first aid does. So our first aid is quite bad. That's why we were unable to harvest any anything of value. Now, our distressing pain has backed off to moderate pain, but that's still not very good. We have no painkillers in our system. Go ahead and eat three more aspirin. And just wait a minute and see if that does anything. We're down to mild pain. Go ahead and eat another aspirin it doesn't really matter so we're down to mild pain which means our stats are recovering and our, our speed is not as bad i still would like to continue pressing here's another humvee that's weird i would like to continue pressing uh, of course of course there's a horde it looks like they're attacking a running motorcycle oh slavering biter as well yeah we're seeing a lot of monster upgrades uh slavering biters are an upgraded form of the swimmer zombies have we been here before? I don't remember being here. Oh no, don't tell me we already came to this stupid hardware store. Oh, that would bum me out a lot. Um, Slavering Biters are an upgraded form of the Swimmer Zombie. They have, uh, they deal cut and bleed damage. So it's very important to have bandages in your inventory uh, at that when you're engaging them. Let's stay away from those guys. I would really like to get to the hardware store. It looks like we've already been there, which is so disappointing because there's nowhere else in this town that we are going to find a pickaxe or anything. Where where do I see you? You're down there. Um, we're going to try to get up here and get eyes on the hardware store. Let's be really careful as we approach the lip here. Quite a bit out here. I was hoping we could see it. East estate sale. Thought it said Easter sale. Uh, I was hoping we would be able to see the hardware store. Oh, it's way over there. We've already overshot it. Is there anything out here? Landscaping supply could potentially have something. Seems unlikely. Let's give them a wide berth. I really don't want to deal with a huge horde right now. Let's kill the one that's following us. A couple that are following us. This is disappointing. This town has been largely disappointing. Not really a lot of the stuff that we're looking for. Ignore. Don't really care about any of that. Let's get this guy as well. Looks like a big horde of something over here. Probably birds. Yeah, crows, I guess. Uh, you can kill them, but there's really no reason to. They don't really yield anything. Anything super valuable. Let's go ahead and deal with you as well, madam. Hello. Good evening. Hopefully you're well. Put her down. Nothing. Nothing. Okay, is that it for stragglers? Yeah, some to our north are gonna spot us, but we're gonna. Man, they're just they're everywhere. Zambi dog. We'll fight a zambi dog while standing in bird poop. There's no reason to try and kite the dog there so fast. Is this a horde of dogs? No. Ugh. Okay, let's get these guys down here. Clear them out. Really should call the episode, but a little frustrated. Today hasn't really gone the way I expected. We found a lab, and I got really excited. And then, of course, we don't have the means to get into the lab. And uh, I still, again, very irritated that the uh, pickaxe requires a book. It's a pickaxe. It's literally people can make them out of stone heads and just mount it to a stick, and you have a rudimentary pick. So why does this require... A book it's not a hard concept if you have the ability to make a steel spear from scratch and a swage and die set and all this other stuff you have the ability to make a pick a rudimentary pick it doesn't have to be a professional you know like super awesome pickaxe it can just be a crappy pickaxe looks like this is actually more about landscape stuff not about tools I thought it would be a tool supply type situation it looks like it's like literal raw materials which we don't really have an interest in clay is pretty good we should grab a little clay um 
it's not something we really need, but what is this stone slabs? It looks like a functional vehicle probably as well. A lot of times when you find a vehicle at a building like this, they're in pretty good shape. Um, I don't know if that's just my brain telling me that and it's not actually true, but oh, I don't care. I don't, I just want to see, do you have tools? Kind of not stuff we want. You have scythes. Oh God. Okay. Fertilizer is nice, but no, thank you. I'm looking for a freaking pickaxe. Okay. Well, God, I don't know where to go anymore. I, there's just, there's nothing here. We would like to get to the hardware store, but there's so many zombies that we have to go through and I'm a little frustrated. I just feel like I should be able to make the damn pickaxe. Anyway, we should probably call the episode. Sorry, internet. I know I'm getting a little frustrated. I know people don't like watching when I'm irritated, but some stuff annoys me, you know? And I think I think it's a perfectly valid argument, you know? I always do. I don't complain about things that I think I'm wrong about, you know? Whatever, you know? I don't get to make those kind of decisions. And it just seems like the kind of thing if I brought it up and was like, hey, by the way, I would like to change the pickaxe to auto learn. Uh, people be like, no, let's not do that. They're always reluctant to change that kind of stuff. Well, that's going to do it. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode. I'll be back with more Cataclysm tutorial stuff in the near future. Uh, so thanks for being here. See you next time.